Good evening. Come with your Bible to the to the Epistle of John. One John. Second John. And come to the third John. Third Epistle of John. The third Epistle of John, verse number four. Just before Jude. Welcome. I heard you always go late for your college. I heard you go to St. Mary's late. Huh? Very good. Third John, chapter 1. There is only one chapter. Verse number 4. Third John, verse number 4. And the Bible says, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. Amen? Amen. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. What? My children walk in truth. I'd like to talk to you today on greater joy. Amen? Greater joy. Now what gives you joy in your life? What gives you joy? What actually makes you joy? Rhea is joyful today? You're not happy. Happy because your sister has come? Very good. Okay. So she's joyful because her sister has come. Okay. So we have a lot of reasons in our life. We get joyful. We are happy. We are glad. But here the apostle of love, uh, apostle of love writes here and says, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children... Walk in truth. The greater joy that you and I should have is that we walk in the truth. Amen? Amen. By the way, what is the truth? Now that's the question. Who asked? Pilate asked, right? He asked whom? Pilate asked Jesus, what is the truth? What is the truth, by the way? Huh? Jesus is the truth. Amen? Amen. John chapter 14, verse number 6. The Bible says, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. The Sunday when we went for soul winning, witnessing. I, I, I went through that path all the time. We all go every Sunday, right? And uh, we went there. You, you became tall or you became thin? <laughs> okay, every Sunday we go to that place and, uh, and I park my bike on that place and we read scripture in that Catholic chapel, in that small grotto. And what scripture they have on that grotto? Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. That's it. And I read all the time, but never struck my mind. It never struck my mind. I never realized. And last Sunday, Adrian told me, Pastor, did you notice something? I said, what? Did you notice in that scripture? I said, yeah, I saw that. No, but did you see something in that scripture? I said, what is that? <laughs> and then I came to know how deceptive the Catholics are. They say that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. But they forget, they, they did not write the next line. The Bible says, no man cometh to the Father but by me. Amen. There's no other way to go to heaven. There's no other truth to go to heaven. There's no other life by which you can get life. But by Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And no man cometh to the Father but by me. Now they don't write the next sentence. You know why? Because they have no problem with Jesus. They have a problem when Jesus is the only way. They have the problem when Jesus is the way to heaven. Because they believe all roads leads to Rome. Through everything. Through all the... Today Adrian came early in the morning to help me. To help me to clean the... Library. Thank you, Audrey. God bless you. Okay, he came early in the morning, 9.30 he came. From 9.30 we've been cleaning. All time. 
I don't know why you fellows did not come. Maybe you're rebelling against me. I don't know. You're doing purposely? I don't know. But anyway, good. Thank you, Audrey. Okay, got our works done. I really wanted to do things. I'm glad that he is very obedient and willing. And so what, what, uh, what we saw is, um, what, what, what they are doing is, they are trying to keep the truth away by giving a little bit of outward appearance, right? Jesus is the way, the truth and the lie. But they don't want to tell you that without Jesus you cannot go to heaven. They want to tell you that, you know, you can go to heaven through the church, through the sacraments, through the commandment and through Krishna and through Muhammad. And they have no problem with anything. They have the problem and you say Jesus is the only way. They have the problem and you say that nobody can go to heaven without Jesus. They have a problem. And so they say that, great thing, Jesus is the truth, the way, the truth and the life. But the next thing that no man shall go to heaven without me, that they will not write. That is not the truth. The truth is, Jesus is the way, the truth and the life. And no man cometh to the Father, but by Jesus alone. Amen? Amen. That is the truth. And here, Apostle John writes and says, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. I was so happy when Audrey found that. I was so happy that he came to know the Lord Jesus Christ and he's growing in this church and it blesses my heart because he is walking in the truth. Amen. It blesses my heart when I see you walking in the truth, the church members, everybody. As much as it blesses my heart, now you must see, uh, so this, this pastor over here, Apostle John is saying, there's no greater joy, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walking through the greater joy that a parent can have, a greater joy a teacher can have, a greater joy a pastor can have, is that his children or his church member or his student are walking in the truth, amen? And the truth is the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. That is the greatest joy. Our joy is not because we are successful in something. God is not interested to see a successful person. God is interested to see a faithful person. Amen. Amen. God does not need a successful man. I want to be successful in everything. No. God wants, you to, God wants to see a faithful man and a faithful woman. Amen. We don't need successful people. We need faithful people. God is will. One, God is looking out for one man and one woman who is totally committed unto the Lord Jesus Christ, who is faithful in the cause of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Are you walking in truth today? Can you have the greater joy in your children? Can you have a greater joy in your disciple? Are you discipling someone today? Am I discipling somebody? Am I, am I taking someone along with me? Am I inviting someone to share the gospel? Am I, am I giving the gospel to someone? Do you have greater joy today? The greater joy is to see someone walking in the truth. A pastor's joy is to see that his church... Uh, is walking in the truth. God's joy is His children are walking in the truth. That is the greater joy. And if you are in the, in the truth today, then you have greater joy. Amen? Your joy is not because you have lots of money. Your joy is not because you have some good vehicles. Your joy is not because you have... A big house, your joy is not because you have you wear a good clothes, your joy is not because you got first class in your education, it's not because you get married list, it's not because you are some famous and celebrity or popular. That's not what the joy is all about. The joy is when you walk in truth. Amen. Now that is not a simple joy. That is a greater joy. Amen. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. It's not knowing truth, remember. It's not about knowing the truth. It's about walking in truth. Amen. It's a continual, it's a present continual stance. 
They are continuing in the truth. They know the truth. It's like it's possible to, uh, for a person to know the truth, but is not walking in the truth. Now, knowing the truth is not the joy. A lot of people know the truth, but they don't walk in truth. Amen? Amen. That is not the greater joy. Now, there were people in that church who knew the truth, but they're not walking in truth. But this man over here, he rejoices in his children, in the church members, in, in those people whom he won for, to the Lord Jesus Christ. They were not only knowing the truth, but they were walking in the truth. Amen? Amen. They were walking in the truth. They were continually walking in the truth. They were committed. They were faithful. They were, they were submissive. They were totally dedicated for the cause of Christ. They knew the truth. They were walking in truth. And they were fulfilling the joy of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Greater joy comes when you know the truth and you walk in truth. Greater joy never comes when you know the truth and you never walk in truth. That is not at all a joy. That is the greater hypocrisy. Amen. Amen. But a greater joy is when you know the truth and you walk in truth. Amen. Amen. Walking. Obedient. That's why the Bible says, um, what is that? Burnt offerings and... Uh, huh? God is, no, God is, what, if God, what is important for God? Obedience is better than? That's it. Obedience is walking in truth. God is not interested in your sacrifices without your truth. We can give sacrifice of praise. Lord, I praise you, Lord. I give you all the glory, Lord. Oh, what a wonderful God I have. You just can say a lot of things. You'll be just like a pot, empty vessel making loud noise. That's not greater joy. The greater joy is when you know the truth and you walk daily in that truth. Amen? Amen. If you wish to be my disciple, throw down your cross and sit at home. No. If you wish to be my disciple, know the Bible and don't do anything. No. If you wish to be my disciple, take up your cross and Take up your cross daily. daily and follow me. Amen? Amen. You take up the cross daily and you follow God. You follow Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. That is called walking in truth. Walking in truth. And so, greater joy comes when you walk in truth. Not just knowing truth. Okay? Walking truth. You obey God's word. You give glory to God. You do what God is telling you. You are not uh, thinking about yourself. You are thinking about God. Your desire and your, your, your desire and your heart is there in God. For God. You're, when you go to bed, you are thinking about God. When you rise up from the bed, you are still thinking about God. God did great thing yesterday in my life. I was sleeping. I was just sleeping as I was still sleeping. And I, was, I did not wake up. I was about to wake up. My eyes are closed. I still don't remember whether it was a dream or whether I was awake in my eyes. Because I still do not know. But before I could wake up, these things came in my mind. Psalm 121 verse 1 and 2. I was not up. My eyes was not open. I was just still on my bed. My eyes closed. This verse came in my mind. I will look. I will lift up my eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord who made heaven and earth. Amen. And then I woke up. I woke up with great smile. I said, Lord, you gave me this verse. What, is, what are you trying to talk to me? The whole day I was so happy. The whole day in the sense that I was happy, I was so happy that early morning this verse came in my mind and, and then I went, I read my Bible, I, I prayed, I went for a walk and, and then I went for my work. And on the way, I'm still thinking, what is God trying to tell me? I was not aware. 
I was in the traffic jam in Panjim. Traffic jam. Everybody's honking from back. Somebody hit me from back on my bike. Doom. Then I went and I hit it on a new Skoda car. Brand new car. Just three days that car was brought out from the showroom. An old man hit. Every time anybody hit me, I never try to argue with them. I just let them go. Because no one hits purposely or intentionally. So I just left them. And so that man behind me hit me. I said, it's okay. I left him. But I hit. Because he hit me, I hit on the car. There was a brand new car. White color car. It was, I was not fast. I was slow. But I still hit. And that behind portion got the black mark of the tire. It was 1 o'clock, imagine, in the traffic jam. Who came out? It was a lady who came out. And I knew one thing, I can never win with a lady on a fight. Amen? Man, you can never win with a lady when you have to fight. She is always right. Right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> they are always right. So I told the ladies, See, ma'am, I, I don't want to fight with you. Just talk to me. Whatever you want me to do, I will do it for you. The police came, the whole traffic was packed, everybody is honking, the vehicle is not going. She was angry, her face was red, and, and she came out to fight with me. I said, please ma'am, I will do whatever you want. Whatever you want me to do for your car, I will do it. But please don't fight with me. And the police came, they asked me for a license. I said, no way, I'm not going to give you a license. I'm talking to her. I want to compromise the thing. So don't, please don't interfere. Allow her to compromise. So those fellows went. She came and she gave me the, and she, uh, she started telling, no, you have to pay for it. I said, I'm going to pay for it. But the guys, everybody who saw this said, hey, don't talk to her. Just go away from here. That's nothing. If You know, that's nothing. She, you never did it anything. They were trying, they were telling me to run away. Take the bike and run. I said, no way. That's not going to happen. I took my bike. I parked it and I waited for it to come. And then she went and parked and she called the Skoda guys and they said, uh, we have to come for an estimate and we have to see how much money it will cost and and we will see how much it is and then we will we can tell you. So you have to come to the showroom. I said, I cannot come. I have work. I had an appointment. She said, then she said, no, please you come with me. I will drop you back. And you pay over there. I said, okay. I went, sat in the car, back seat, nice AC, <laughs> new brand new car. Okay, beautiful car, it smelled good inside, it's a new car and good friend. I went, I said from Panjim, the, the, the thing took place uh, near that Vishal, Vishal's Mart, okay. She took me to Taligaon, I went to Taligaon with her in the car. I went all the way, I'm thinking, Lord, this car, Skoda car is not less than 9 lakh rupees. How much am I going to pay? How much am I going to pay? She's going to ask me 10,000? From where will I give that money? But I just remember the whole, whole moment. I'm just remembering Psalm 121, verse, two and, verse 1 and 2. I didn't know what God was trying to tell me. I'm asking God, what were you trying to tell me in the morning? I went inside. I was quiet. I didn't try to fight with her. I'm not arguing with her. I'm quiet. I wanted to keep my testimony. I wanted to keep my cool. I went and I went to the showroom. I opened the door for her. She looked at me. And she was expecting me not to open because she thought I'm angry and I want to fight with her. But I opened a door for her. She looked at me with a surprise. And then we went in. And she called the inspector, the one who inspects the car. And he came and inspected and he saw the car. Say, hey, don't worry about it. This will go. This is nothing. It gave me a little peace. And then he went inside, brought a bottle of cream. He took it in a cloth. He put it on that spot and wiped it. And when he wiped, the whole color vanished. Amen. Amen. The whole color vanished. It, it looked brand new. Zoom! Came to my mind. I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills. From whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord who made heaven and earth. Amen. Amen. I knew what God was speaking to me right from the morning. You are telling, son, I am with you. Fear not. Amen. Amen.
And she was very happy. I said, ma'am, are you comfortable now? She said, yes, I'm. Are you satisfied now? She said, yes, I'm satisfied. Are you going to drop me? Sure, I'm going to drop you. So I went back and the door was not opening. She said, no, come in front. So I went and I sat in the front car. I just sat. She said, I asked her, what's your name? She said her name. I forgot her name. Then she asked me my name. I told her my name. She said, what do you do? I said, I'm a Christian. I'm a preacher. Oh, that's why you were so quiet and calm. And I started sharing the gospel to her. Amen. Amen. On the way, we really became good friends. She dropped me. And then I gave her some suggestion. I said, next time somebody hits your car, first you see that you see the number of the vehicle who hit the car. Otherwise, they can run away by hitting. And she was very good. She asked me three, four times, what's your name? Arvind? What's your name? What's your name? She wanted to keep, make sure that she remembered my name. She said, uh, because, they were, uh, because other guys would have been cursing me and would have been fighting with me. But you have been calm. When I said I'm a Christian and I'm a preacher, you know what that happened? What that did? That made an impact in her life. That made her to realize Christians are different from others. Amen. And I shared the gospel to her. What, what I want to tell you. There is no greater joy. Than to know. That my children walk in truth. Amen? Amen. When you are walking daily with the Lord. You know who gets the glory? God gets the glory. You know what he says? I am with you. I will take care of you. When you are walking in truth, you are not walking alone. I am walking with you. Amen. Amen. I am walking with you when you are walking in truth. You see, walk in truth. Which means, what is that? Who is truth? You are walking in Christ. Amen. Amen. Which means, when you are walking in Christ, you are not walking alone. You are walking in Christ and Christ is with you. He is the one who is sheltering you. Amen? Amen. He is the one who takes care of you. You will have great joy when you will walk in the truth. That is the greater joy. When you are going to walk in the truth. Walk with Christ. Okay? And he says, fear not, for I am with you. Always. I have no greater joy than to know, than to hear that my children walk in truth. Greater joy comes when you walk in truth. So my prayer and my desire and my hope is that you continue to walk in truth. Amen. Amen. And believe me, when you walk in truth, Jesus walks with you. You are not alone. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you. And may you continue to walk in truth. Shall we pray?